What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can use Photoshop Generative Fill in order to create distant set extensions for a simple moving shot inside of Adobe After Effects. This is the second part of our Generative Fill for Video series. We're coming out with three different parts initially. The first one we have released already, and that covers how you can generate and add set extensions to locked off video or film clips inside of Adobe After Effects using Generative Fill inside of Photoshop. In that first video, we also show how you can expand that shot into a wider frame using Generative to fill to fill in the background and then clean up those elements as well. Now in this second video we're going to take these set extensions one step further by showing how we can generate them and then track them into a moving shot. And then finally in the last video for this series which we will release sometime this month we're going to show how we can use Photoshop generative fill combined with Blender 3D camera projection so we can use these set extensions with even more complex moving shots where parallax is a lot more prominent. Anyways guys without further ado let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. The first thing we're going to do is import our footage into our composition. So this is the shot we're going to be working with today. We just have this uh, moving shot of this woman looking out over a rooftop and it's a pretty cinematic shot, shot at sunset. You can see the background is fairly blurry here. So we're gonna see how Photoshop Generative Fill deals with that. And what I'm going to try to do is just add some taller skyscrapers in this deep background as well. So somewhere to the right of our character here. I'm going to try not to have our character occlude these objects so we don't have to roto her out. But anyways, we're just going to add those buildings here. We're also going to track them using a point of contrast on our footage here. So anyways, guys, we'll go ahead and import this inside of our composition. So just drag this over here and then we'll create a new composition with this footage. And now we just want to scroll through our timeline and choose a frame that we want to add our matte painting to. I think we probably want to use some of the first part of this footage. I'll just trim our composite to here. Uh, we don't want our perspective to change too much because this is a simple 2D track we're doing in this video rather than a 3D track that we'll show in the next one. We'll choose this frame right here just so we have plenty of space to add the buildings. And we'll export this frame from our timeline and let's get to work inside of Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and go to composition, same frame as file, and we'll make it a Photoshop file. Go to output, call this city set extension, still, okay? It's going to be a Photoshop PSD file so we can open that within Photoshop and get to work. Go ahead and save that. And then finally to actually export the file, we'll go to render. And now let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. So we have our Adobe Photoshop beta, which contains our generative fill for now. We'll go to open and we'll find the still that we have just exported here. Go ahead and open this up. Now, as you can see here, this is our generative fill toolbar. We can select the subject, remove the background. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if we want some more controls, we can just make a selection using one of our select tools here, wherever we want to do something. And then some new tools will pop up on this toolbar as well. So the first thing we're going to do is create some sort of clean plate, just in case we do want to occlude our subject from the background. So a clean plate is going to contain our image except for our character here in the foreground. I'm just going to use the lasso tool and I'm just going to draw around our character very roughly, just like that. Now I'll click on generative fill again. and I'll do remove character, generate. All right, so now we have a Nice little clean plate. We've removed our character from the footage. We have three different variations here to choose from. I think probably the first one is my favorite. And you can see we have this generative fill layer here that we can turn on and off or even see it by itself. So great, we've removed our character. Now let's start adding some buildings. So to make it a little bit easier to add the buildings in the background, I'm just going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to select where I want to add the first building. So I think probably right around here, add a nice tall skyscraper in the background. I'll click on generative fill, type in add tall building generate. And just like that, it's added a building to our scene. Now this one's not looking too good. However, for a few clicks, it's not terrible. Let's look at a few different variations here. This one's probably looking the best out of these three, but I'm going to try to get some more variations here because I'm not really liking any of these. So we'll try add building with windows. Go ahead and click on generate. A lot of the time you just need to experiment with different phrases to see what the AI can give us. Actually, uh, I'm not really liking any of these either, to be honest. The sky is not bad. A little tower. We can actually keep that, but I'm going to try to add some more buildings as well. Um, rather than just selecting the area where I want the building to kind of come from, I'll actually just select some of the area below the building as well, just so we can use that data as well and try to combine it into our base building plate as well. So I'll go ahead and click on generative fill, say add building. Keep it simple. All right, so I'm actually liking this guy right here. 
I feel like it's done a really nice job matching the blur on the photograph. So that's quite nice. We're gonna go with this. I might actually add some things behind our tree here and then composite our tree over our set extension. So I'll just go here. We'll actually make a larger selection this time. We'll say add more buildings. Click on generate, let's see what we get. All right, so now it's keeping that same architectural style. I actually like this a fair bit. This one matches very closely this guy, so that could work as well. We have three different options here. I think this is pretty nice. So we have before, after. Maybe we could add some more buildings on this side as well to kind of fill in the frame. Now, I know I'm not really being specific with the architecture type guys. You can try to be more specific with it, but um, in my experience, it's been hard to get very specific results that are actually good in this stage of development. But we could, of course, tell the style of the building. So we could maybe over here use generative fill and then we could say add cyberpunk sci-fi building. Go ahead and generate. So you can be more specific if you want to, but it doesn't always dial in exactly what you want, which is why this isn't the perfect tool, but it can definitely help get a lot of uh, quick things done. So you can see it's gone over here and added some sci-fi elements, which is actually quite nice. You know, we can do something like this. I actually kind of like this one. You know, we have like an older city here, old architecture, new architecture. Yeah, I think it did a pretty good job matching the perspective. Could be rotated a bit so we can fix a little bit of that in the composition. But uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna go with this. I'm gonna roll with the punches here. But just for the sake of this example, you can see that we can actually change the style of our buildings with the prompt as well. So we have a cyberpunk sci-fi building and we'll probably have to clean up these edges here in compositing since we see further to the left of frame in our actual video, but I think it should be fine. So finally, I'll add one more. We'll add one more set of sci-fi buildings right here. Maybe I'll try to get a higher one like an actual skyscraper. So we'll do add sci-fi cyberpunk skyscraper with lights on generate. So this is kind of interesting. The perspective isn't perfect. Um, this one's a little bit nicer. I do like the bokeh. It's not exactly what I was imagining, but it's not bad for a little tower off in the distance. You have like sci-fi on this side of the frame. Then we have our traditional buildings over here. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna go with it. Now, just like in our last video, I'm going to export all of these different generative fill layers within our PSD file so that we can then use those layers individually within After Effects and tweak some things as we desire. So you can see we have our elements to work with right here. And if you want, we can composite out, you know, the sky and everything to help everything blend a bit better, feather some edges, etc. So we're just going to save our PSD file like this, and then we're going to open up that PSD file within After Effects and track in our elements. So we'll just go to File and Save, click on OK, and now we'll open up After Effects and start compositing these elements into our shot. All right, guys, here we are inside of After Effects. Now we'll open up our PSD file. So we'll go to File, Import, File, and we can find our same PSD file that we have just saved. Go ahead and open this up. Now we do want to import this as a composition with editable layer styles. So by doing that, you'll have access to all the different layers we have inside of Photoshop within After Effects. Go ahead and open this. And by doing that, you'll have a composition with all of your different generative layers here, like so. But also, you'll have access to all of your different layers right here. So I'm actually just going to drag all these layers and put them on top of our composite like so. And now we have access to all of our different elements here. We can actually turn off a few. And you can see if we turn off these bottom two, which include our original image as well as our clean plate, this is what we get. However, of course, we do have a problem because our matte painting isn't moving with our shot. So let's get to tracking our footage. So the first thing I want to do is mark the position on our timeline so that we can come back to this as necessary. Since we did our matte painting to this frame of our shot, we're gonna actually be able to access that again. So to do that on this frame, we'll go to layer, markers, add marker. And now you can see we have a nice marker that we can come back to where our matte painting will definitely line up with our shot. So as you can see here, if we play through our shot, we get this mess like this. And then finally it'll line up right there. So now let's track our footage and get things to line up a bit better. Now, I think probably since our elements are so deep in the background, I can get away with just using a singular tracking point. I'm not positive, but we're gonna try out a single tracking point first. But what I'm going to do is make that tracking point as close to one of the buildings as possible. So probably this first cathedral that we added, uh, I'll add the tracking point near that. So at the very least, the tracking point will work with this element. So I'll go to our footage here and I will go to our tracker and we'll click on track motion. And now we have a tracker in our scene. We'll zoom in here. And if you don't know how tracking works in After Effects, uh, essentially you're tracking the point within this middle square and then this outer square is your search area. So you need to make this bigger if your shot is moving very quickly. So to track this first point, I think I'll just use the edge of this cathedral here. And I'll just track position and also do rotation. 
I don't think we need to worry about it too much, but it might be a good thing to have. So just so we have access to that data if we need it, we can track maybe this little dot on our skyline. All right, so now I'll go ahead and track forward here. That's looking pretty good. Tracks are holding. And this is the end of our work area, so I'll end our tracking right there. And actually, so this is not confusing, I'll just go to composition, trim comp to work area, just since uh, this is the only area we're going to add that set extension to. So now we've tracked forward from our timeline marker. Now we'll go back to that marker, then we'll track backward. And it looks like the tracks are still holding fairly well here. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now we want to add a null object for this first building. I'll go to layer, new, null object. We'll rename this cathedral tracker. And we'll go back to our footage, double click. So our tracker window pops up. Then we'll go to edit target. And we'll change the layer that we're adding this tracking data to, to the cathedral tracker null. Click on OK. And then finally, we'll apply this tracking data. So as soon as you press apply, this guy will pop up. We wanna apply the dimensions to the X and Y. Go ahead and click on okay. And now if you kind of scroll through your scene here, you'll notice that this null stays with our cathedral. So now what we can do is go to the frame where we have added our matte painting elements. And we'll go to the cathedral first, as well as this tower I think would be fine as well. We'll take both of these guys. And I'll just disable all the other ones for now, just to take a look at these first two. So we have our little radio tower and our cathedral. I'll select both of these and take our parent tool to the cathedral tracker. Now you can see they're parented to the cathedral tracker on this specific frame that we have exported. And now you can see if we play through our scene here, our building is tracked onto our footage. Now we actually have one more building on the far right of our camera that I think is close enough to this tracking point to work. So again, we'll just go to that same frame where we started our tracking data and that we've created our map painting on. And then we'll add this to our shot and I'll parent this to that cathedral tracker as well. And we'll also give this a shot really quick. And yeah, that looks like it's holding as well. Now, obviously we're still seeing those weird edges, but uh, we'll clean those up in a second here. All right, so these two elements are tracked into our shot. Now let's add another tracking marker for the rest of our elements here, our two sci-fi elements on the left of frame. So I'll go back to our footage. We'll go to our frame that we've created our map pinning for. I'll go to our tracker tab, track motion again. And it's going to create a new track point for us. Again, we will track the rotation and position. We'll roll in here make them a bit bigger. And we just wanna track some points near our sci-fi buildings. This guy is a nice point of contrast right there, as long as our character doesn't occlude it at all. And then we'll do another one right here. This should work okay. We'll make this tracking point a bit closer. Since this is calculating the rotation, you do want your tracking points to be a fair bit apart, but also near the element that you want to track. All right, so pretty successful track there. Now we'll go back to our keyframe reference and we'll track our shot backwards. All right, so these points are looking pretty good. We can scroll through our timeline just in case, but they're looking fairly decent here. Now, once again, we'll add a new null object. We'll go to our reference frame here, go to layer, new, null, and we'll call this one sci-fi tracker. Okay, then we'll go back to our footage, double click, edit target, and we'll choose our sci-fi tracker. Okay, and then once again, we'll apply this data to this tracking point. Okay, and now we'll select our other two set extension elements and on our frame of reference, we'll parent them to the sci-fi tracker. And we'll go ahead and turn them on and let's see what we get. Our tracks are holding pretty well here. Obviously we have to do some cleanup. We do have to roto her out and overlay her on top of our footage. But uh, yeah, at least our tracks are looking good and our matte painting is looking solid as well. So great, now let's just do some basic cleanup work and we should have a pretty interesting final result. The first thing I'm going to do is feather the edges of our different elements here. So I'll first select this sci-fi tower and I'll just go to our masking tool and I'll just make a very simple mask around our element here. Since we're going to feather the edges, it shouldn't be too crazy. Just a simple garbage mat will do just fine, I think. Go back to our composition. We'll go to our mask settings and we'll just feather our pixels a bit just like that. So 31 pixels, let's take a look at our result. So I'll just turn this guy as well as our sci-fi shot on, turn off the masking settings. And now you can see that's blending into our shot much better. Obviously we still have to occlude our character, but it's looking pretty clean in the background. So great, now we can do the same thing for our other elements, do our next sci-fi element. You can clearly see the edges on this one, but that's no problem. We can go in here with our pen tool, just draw a rough little garbage mat just to feather in that sky a bit. 
go to our masking settings and again we'll just feather this 30 pixels so it's similar to the other one go back to our comp it's not quite there yet still a little uncanny you just feather this maybe 40 pixels now it's still not looking perfect i might actually just try to get rid of the sky here so what we can do is just go to effect keying then we'll use a extract tool and we'll just isolate this layer by itself really quick and i'll just take out the brighter portions of the image a bit and then feather that with this other tool so just like this. This should help blend it into the background a bit. So pretty much what we're doing here with this extract tool is we're bringing this over to extract only the highlights of the image, which includes our sky here. Let's take a look with our footage. And this is looking a bit better. One more thing I'm noticing here is there's a little bit more grain in the sky. So we can actually add some grain to our element as well to match that to our footage. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'll do the same thing for our other elements. Do this guy next, double click, go to our masking tool, quick little garbage mat here. Once again, we'll feather this by around 30 pixels. We'll go back and do our composite here. And yeah, that's feathered in quite nicely. Now, obviously we have this tree here in the foreground, which we'll deal with in a second. All right, so we have our next element here. Again, we'll click on this. So same thing, guys, just making a quick garbage mat around our element, just to feather in those edges a bit so they're not too noticeable, just like so. Now we'll feather this one by 30 as well. We're almost there guys. We have this last little tower here with a quick garbage mat. Feather it by 31, go back to our comp and that's looking fine as well. All right, so now we've added all of our elements. Things are looking much smoother now. Let's add some grain to these elements to blend them into our live action plate a bit. So I'll select our sci-fi element here. We'll go to effect, noise and grain. We'll add some grain. We'll zoom in here. You can see we have some grain here, but not on our element. But now if we turn on final output, you can see we're adding some grain to our element. We can bring down the intensity a bit. Maybe one is about right, but the size may be 0.5. Maybe the intensity could be 0.6. Yeah, you can see it's too much actually. So 0.2 maybe. 0.2 is looking pretty good. That's matching to our live action plate pretty well. Maybe increase the softness a bit. So we're matching our grain levels a bit more. Now we'll edit, copy our grain, and we'll select all of our other elements as well, and then just uh, paste this effect on top. And now all of our elements will have similar grain added to them as the live action shot. So great, we've matched our grain levels. Now finally, for our last bit of cleanup, we'll occlude our character here. So I'll select our live action plate. I'll press Command D to duplicate. Then we'll add this on top of our composite, and we'll relabel this one Woman Roto. Okay. And for rotoscoping characters, I like to use the rotor brush tool. So I'll select this, double click our woman, and on our first frame, just drag and drop over our character here. And we can start adding some rotor data to our scene. And you can press option and select to remove rotor data, or you can just drag to add something to your rotor data. And then you can press command and scroll to change the size of your rotor brush. And this is looking pretty good. One thing I want to do is use the refine edge tool to get the detail of our hair. So I'll select our rotor brush tool, go to refine edge tool, and then I'll just go around our character's head here. And now as you can see here, it's going to pick up that data as best it can. Go back to our standard rotor brush tool, then I'll press command, right arrow key, just scroll through our timeline, probably go here by frame by frame here. And letting the rotor brush do a thing, if there are any errors, I'll tweak the rotor brush data on that frame, but it's looking pretty good so far. And now all of our rotor data is looking good. We can freeze this data and work with it in the compositor. So go ahead and click on freeze and it will go through and freeze all the frames that you have created with the rotor brush. And now you can see here, our woman is occluded nicely with this rotor brush data. And you can see that even her hair has that fine detail in it. If you do want to tweak this rotor brush data, you can play around with some settings right here. You can use motion blur, decontaminate the edge colors a bit if you're on a green screen, for example. There are a lot of different settings you can play with. I think it's looking pretty good in this case, but again, feel free to play around with that. For the sake of this tutorial, because I think it's getting a bit long, I'm going to skip rotoring out the palm tree here in the foreground. Essentially, you just do the same thing we did for the woman. But for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is just extend the mask on our cathedral here. So it just covers up that tree and that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I'll just grab this guy, extend it upward, and we should be good to go. 
and now this is looking pretty good. We still have these trees blowing in the wind in the foreground, so I'm gonna go with this for our final result. Of course, there are lots of different things we could add to this. We could use our Splatterfy add-on, for example, to add some birds in the deep background, maybe add a spaceship coming in the foreground. Lots of different options for us, but for the sake of the actual map painting in the deep background, I think Photoshop Generative Fill has done a pretty good job helping us out here. So that's how you can use this to create these distant elements for your scenes. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Stay tuned for the third part of this video. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.